Hello everyone, Deacon John Myers here with another in our series of Power Church software tutorials. Today we're going to look at simply putting in the installation disk. So stay tuned. Before we start today's tutorial, if you haven't already, please take a second right now and subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can do so by clicking on the icon in the lower corner below. That way you'll know when new videos come out. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And now let's look at putting in the installation disk for the PowerChurch software. Let's look at an overview of the PowerChurch accounting software for installation purposes. The accounting software is made up of five modules. And by modules, they are almost like standalone softwares within a software. And PowerChurch integrates them. Things like contributions and payroll and accounts payable and accounts receivable. These four modules feed their information into the main module called fund accounting. And the fund accounting module is like the general ledger of a business. Each of the other modules feeds its data to the fund accounting module for permanent record keeping. This process is called posting or post your data into fund accounting. Now let's look at the four modules and see what they provide. The contribution module is where you record the giving for the church. This is done through envelope numbers assigned to the givers. There are also fund designations for the gift itself to be used. You can keep track of pledges for contributions and you can have checks or cash as types of contributions. There's great report capabilities and you can set up email lists and you can even set up an automatic check reader. Inside the payroll module, this is where you can keep your own payroll for your church. You can keep your employer information, your employee information, your payroll items. You can set up things like tax tables, keep track of vacation time and time off, and look up things for historic records. You can use direct deposit with PowerChurch and you can set up electronic bank transfers. It also does reporting, such as your quarterly reporting and end of year reporting for payroll. The accounts payable module is very useful and you'll spend a lot of time there because that's where you pay the bills for your church. You can also set up vendors and you can search past records for bill payment history. The accounts receivable module is used for billing for services provided by the church. Things like if you have a school tuition that you charge for or yearly fees or any services offered by the church can be billed through this module. And all of these modules feed their data into the fund accounting module, which is the record keeping part of PowerChurch. It has your financial statements like your balance sheet and income and expense reports. It's where you will do your bank reconciliations and set up your chart of accounts. It also provides reports for your annual business meeting. Now that you know the overall structure of the PowerChurch software, let's take a look at the installation process in the software itself. To begin the installation of PowerChurch Plus version 11, place the installation disk in your disk drive. The installation screen should auto-play. Click on Install PowerChurch Plus 11. When the Windows Setup Wizard appears, click Next. Choose the location where you want PowerChurch to be installed. The first time you run PowerChurch, you will have to set up your church information. If you have previous versions of PowerChurch and you wish to convert your files to version 11, click Yes. Depending on the age and the version of PowerChurch, you may be asked questions about fund accounting and payroll. If this is your first time installation of PowerChurch and you have no previous version, click No and proceed. Fill in your registration number, your church name and address, and phone number, and proceed. If you have upgraded from a previous version of PowerChurch, your file conversion is complete at this point. Click Exit and Restart PowerChurch. To begin the installation of PowerChurch Plus version 11, place the installation disk in your disk drive. The installation screen should auto-play. Click on Install PowerChurch Plus 11.
you will be prompted to create a site on PowerChurch.com. When you first start PowerChurch, the Quick Task pane is opened on the left. The Quick Task pane contains some of the more commonly used functions. The complete set of functions can be accessed from the menus overhead and the drop down menus associated with them. When you're finished installing PowerChurch, you will want to go through your setup accounting wizard. You will also want to go to your file preferences and set up your system setup options, your user setup options, and especially your passwords. These setup menus will be covered in other tutorials.